It's another day in pandemic paradise, and I'm feeling pretty chill right now. That's Jeff Horowitz, Chief Mentor at the Mac Mentor. Jeff teaches people how to use their Apple devices, and he knows everything there is to know about all things Apple. He's also a wonderful friend and advocate to me, and someone who helps keep you centered. Most importantly, he introduced me to the best red wine I've ever tasted, Clio. Not to be confused with the late psychic Miss Clio, may she rest in peace. No, I don't think that number's still in service. Okay, back to Jeff. Why are you feeling chill? There's a pandemic going on. Um, because I have a nice glass of wine that I'm drinking and... Um, Can we see it? Absolutely. And um, I, had a, I had a fun day. Uh, I have my... Uh, I'm divorced. I have my kids every... Um, every couple days and then every other weekend and uh, my kids were with me uh, yesterday and today um, so, so wait so this is interesting and this is <laughs> i've actually been wondering this if um if you're divorced right and you and you split custody yes. with social distancing how does that work so um a very good question um right. <laughs> and when all of this started um my son actually was in italy and he came home the last day of february like right before everything got bad he was up north in italy he was not um in the danger zones but the program that he was with was um had enough foresight to send them home and alerted them that they should um, quarantine, self-quarantine for two weeks. And so he came home, he spent two weeks with his mom, and on the day that he was done, um, we went on lockdown, right? The United States went on lockdown. And so um, since that time, so it's about three weeks, I think, maybe actually a month, a little, a little over a month, um, my kids have been splitting time here and at their mom's, uh, which is not far. She's in Deerfield, I'm in Riverwoods. Mm -hmm. And um, they are deathly afraid of all this, which is good. Um, not that I'm not, but um, like they, they don't go out except for to come to my house and go to their mom's. Um, my kids are 23, 21 and 18. So they're, and, they're very good social distancers then. <laughs> <laughs> you once told me a long time ago. When we wasn't were, that long ago. When we were at Starbucks, which sounds ridiculous that we can't be at Starbucks anymore. Um, you once told me I was talking to you uh, about a problem, right? And I kept like, I kept repeating that word problem and you listened because you're a good listener and then um you 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 held up your finger it was like you're doing this jedi mind trick on the feeble um and you said a problem is an opportunity and in fact i wrote a blog post about that because that's something that uh that has stuck with me it, it really resonated and you know when i first heard it like many things it it, it made sense but i didn't understand how to apply it and then with practice i started doing it more and more and it's for me it's really reframed what a problem is and how to respond rather than react how are you applying that maxim these days so um in, in my business i do as you know um one-to-one -one training or group trainings on you know, your technology. And um, it's obviously difficult to do in-person trainings right now, face-to-face, um, -face. but what I have uh, done uh, as a result of the virus um, is I've really tried to push out ideas for my clients on things that they could be doing. 
and it has it, it's led to a lot of screen sharing opportunities which um just never did before because you know i'd be going to you know person a's house or person b's business um but you can't do that anymore and so we've had to just um figure out a way to keep the learning possible um without having it be face to face or in person what's that transition been like um so that good good question because for a number of my clients it's been easy um the newer technology that you have the easier it is but for the folks that are on an older mac for instance that doesn't have the built-in capability to do that it's challenging and it could either lead to requiring uh, a new machine or trying to interface with them via just talking which is very difficult when i can't see what they're doing you know i've um and i've had to do that um a few times you know over the last couple of weeks where you know i know the settings of the devices like the back of my hand and so i can walk somebody through it but sometimes it's just not enough yeah so if you're like on a, on a zoom call or i guess facetime with them you almost want to reach through the screen like <laughs> the ring style that 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 horror film right. yeah but, but that's and one of the nice features of the mac is that it has built-in screen sharing capabilities through the messages app um and it's a complete encrypted screen sharing uh which is which can't be hacked which is great and um so i can get access to the machine i could literally take it over from my mac and i can show them how to do something or do something for them um which is typically what happens <laughs> yeah. all right so you're able to mac mentor while sheltering in place yeah um it's been interesting um over the it, towards i think it was the last week of march I had a lot of orders for new devices. And typically when, um, when that happens, uh, I would deliver the Mac, I would set it up with the client in person. Um, obviously that is not going, it, it, it can't be done. And so what I've been doing is bringing the devices into my office, um, setting them up in conjunction with my client because a lot of times um, if a client has what's called two-factor authentication enabled, then when I'm setting the device up, another one of their devices will be pinged and they'll get a notification that um, someone is trying to log in to a device with their information. And so they get a code sent, they have to send that code to me. So I work with them a little bit, but I do most of the setting up in my office and then I deliver the devices to them um in social distancing um you know i'll call them up and i'll say hey i'm at your house i'm going to put your device at your door um if you have any questions call me and we can walk through them yeah and uh it, it's probably more difficult to change the way you interact with current clients than getting new clients during the pandemic because they don't know any differently Exactly. And I've actually had a number of new clients referred to me. Um, as you might imagine, a lot of folks uh, who've never had to work at home before um, and are working at home with not just two adults, but with kids who are trying to do e-learning, um, they don't have the infrastructure in their house to do that, right? You, they don't, you, you don't realize that you need a certain amount of bandwidth in order to handle not just one adult working but multiple adults and kids yeah. and, and emotional so, bandwidth by the way and emotional bandwidth yes um and so early on i was helping folks set up their home office you know whether that was you know guiding them with what to do with comcast as far as getting additional bandwidth or you know there there were a handful of clients that i did have to go into their home um, set up new uh, Wi-Fi routers in order for them to be able to work from home. All right, so let, let's talk about uh, 
the hopefully the not too distant future when we're able to go outside again and mm -hmm. be among people. When we get the all clear, what do you think you'll do first? So um, I have no doubt that the first thing I'm going to do is go to my favorite sushi restaurant uh, in the city called Kaizen um, and, and sit down and have some really good sushi and sake. Um, not that I couldn't get sushi here to, you know, pick it up or what have you, but, and, and you know, it's a really interesting question, Dave, because I've been thinking a lot about what it's going to be like when this is over, right? You know, we, we do a lot of networking and, and what's that going to look like, yeah. you know, let alone, you know, going to Starbucks and sitting there, but, you know, even going to a restaurant, you know, are, are the, the hostess and the, the waiter is going to be wearing face mask. You know, what, what, what's that going to be like? Yeah, it's, I know it's top of mind for me. Yeah. <laughs> and that's going to be, you know, we, we really didn't get the chance to transition into this place, but hopefully we will when we're, when we're out, when, when we're phasing out of um, shelter in place and oh. the, the situation now. Uh, I, I know you're a meditator. We've we've talked about that. Uh, how would you compare meditating now to <laughs> pre-pandemic? So um, I do so much more now. In fact, if I miss a day, then the day that I miss is um, it's shot. Um, what do you mean? It's it's not a good day, or it's it's it's, it's just not a good day. Like huh. because I've been able to meditate, like not only twice a day, but I'm typically meditating a little longer and on the days, and, and I, I would say at least six out of seven days a week, I'm doing it. When I do it, it's, I, it, no matter what the tumult level in the house is like, I'm fine. But the day, it, like if I am too busy or if I just don't get it done, you know, forget it. Not good, but I, I'm grateful to be able to do it more, you know, like a typical day for me is I get up about 630, I walk my dogs, um, I'll, I'll have a little breakfast and then now I go and meditate where didn't have that option before, you know, after breakfast, I was getting ready to either network or go to a client. And, you know, now I try to start my clients later just because I can. I don't need to start them at 9 o'clock. I can start them at 10 or 10.30 because it just doesn't matter. Yeah. I have a very um, interesting relationship with meditation. Uh, I have commitment issues. And, you know, what I call the <laughs> meditating is I say, it's, not, it's not you, it's me. Um, but, right. So for me, it's, it's a little more difficult because I've got – young children at home uh, absolutely find, find that quiet time and place is tough you know before when they were at school um which seems like 10 years ago uh, they'd go off and i might meditate first thing in the morning now it's hard it, it's it's something that's easy to stop doing and absolutely very counterintuitive because it it can only help right yeah. i mean there's it doesn't hurt at all uh, but it's, for me at least, it's easy to fall out of that, that pattern and I need to get back in. I just don't know when. I, I've actually learned to meditate in noise with everything that goes on around. Like this morning, for instance, uh, my two daughters were in the kitchen and, you know, my one, one daughter was making pancakes and I was able to, um, just to lay down on the floor and I did 10 minutes of meditating. They were doing their thing. Now, before all this, I would not have been able to do that. I would have been bothered by the fact that there was noise. And I either would have gone upstairs and tried to do it, or I would have said, oh, I'll do this later. Well, you should come here and try. <laughs> when, <laughs> when social distancing is over, <clears throat> yeah, come here on a, on, a, on a weekend or a morning or an evening and, and tell me how it goes. For more information on The Mac Mentor, visit themacmentor.com, email info at themacmentor.com, or call 847-902-2000.
6681. On the next episode of Another Day in Pandemic Paradise, I'll be talking to unique Larry Rosenthal, owner of Unique Holstery Carpet and Rug Cleaning. So people, it looks like the hum, human nature is out there and people are actually adhering to a lot of the rules. Some people are, but I think the majority are, and we can see the results from it. That, that restores my you know, faith yeah. in, in, in human beings. It really does. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, everyone.